All right, we're looking at the Rajesh Singh problem set here. Let's go down to question number one, and we'll uh, start reading after that. Question one, the per ounce price of gold that corresponds to $1,500 of, of finished jewelry is closest to. We've got three numbers here, so we know we're going to be doing some math um, to figure out per ounce price of gold that leads to $1,500 cost of uh, finished jewelry. So Rajesh Singh is the CFO of TBC, TBZ Limited, a London-based retailer of fine jewelry and watches. Singh notices that the price of gold has begun to increase. If economic activity continues to pick up, the cost of gold is likely to accelerate um, its rate of increase as both the demand and inflation rates rise. Implications for rising gold prices. Singh is concerned about the cost implications for TBZ if gold prices continue to rise. He requests a meeting with Anita Sood, Chief Operations Officer of TBZ. To prepare for the conference, Singh asks one of his staff, James Baker, to prepare a regression analysis comparing the price of gold to the average cost of TBZ purchases of finished gold jewelry. So that looks like the uh, relationship that we're looking for in our question. We're looking at per ounce price of gold and corresponding to the cost of the finished jewelry. Um, so we're probably going to be using this regression analysis here to figure this out. Baker provides the regression results shown in Exhibit 1. Uh, while reviewing the results, Sood becomes even more concerned about the implications for the finished, uh, for the cost of finished jewelry to TBZ if the price of gold continues to rise. To remain profitable, the cost of finished jewelry should not exceed 1500 So it looks like that's where that 1500 number comes from. They want to make sure, um, see what cost of gold price would make sure the jewelry doesn't exceed that. And so we're going to be using the regression analysis here for this. So the uh, dependent variable is going to be that cost of finished goods, which is what we're regressing the cost of gold on. So we're going to be taking this intercept, and then we're going to add the uh, beta of the cost of gold, and then we're going to multiply that by the number, which is what we'll be solving for to get that 1500. So here's what that is going to look like. So we're going to take the 1500 equals the 11.06 intercept plus 2.897x. So x is going to be um, that price of gold that we're solving for. And we're going to do the algebra out. So we'll bring the 11.06 over here. And then we're going to divide 1488.94 by the 2.897. Gives us 513.95. Scroll down and see if we have that as one of our answers. Uh, round up a little bit. Answer A. Question 2. Sood suggests conducting a broish pagan test to check for the presence of heteroscedasticity. The most appropriate method to conduct the test would be regress the variance of error terms from the estimated regression equation on independent variables, regress the square of error terms um, from the estimated regression equation on the dependent variables, or C, regress the square of error terms from the estimated regression equation on the independent variables. Um, so right off the bat, looking at these answers, Answer C is basically the definition of a broish pagan test, and so that's probably going to be our answer, um, but let's make sure there's no further information in the text that kind of sways us a different way. Uh, so we left off right here, so let's go down here to the testing for heteroscedasticity, which is what we're looking to do. Sood remarks that the dramatic increase in price over the past 30 years leads her to suspect heteroscedasticity in the regression results, she suggests to Singh that they conduct a broish pagan test for heteroscedasticity. Um, and then we've got regression concerns. The principal concern about regression is whether the period chosen is a good predictor of the current situation. Uh, he makes the following statement. So it looks like here we've kind of moved on. So basically the text is just saying let's do this broish pagan test and then the uh, question we're looking at is just saying what is a broish pagan test um, so as we kind of said before we're going to go with answer c regress the square of error terms from the estimated regression on the independent variables that's pretty much um, just a straight up definition there of that test answer c question three are singh statement one and baker statement two correct or incorrect regarding the usefulness of regression results described in exhibit one and the value of the slope coefficient 
So for sing, we have correct, baker correct, sing correct, baker incorrect, or sing incorrect, baker correct. So one of them, one of these statements will be correct and one will not. So let's uh, scroll up here and take a look at these two statements. Uh, so we left off right here, I believe, at regression concerns. So we'll start reading. Sing's principal concern about the regression is whether the period chosen is a good predictor of the current situation. He makes the following statement. Statement one, we may have a problem with Parameter instability if the relationship between gold prices and jewelry costs has changed over 30 years. Um, so this uh, could certainly be an issue for us. Um, parameter instability is what is kind of described here. If gold used to have a high correlation with jewelry costs, but now it no longer does, or that correlation is in the opposite direction, then our regression results are not going to be helpful in actually predicting um, the end jewelry costs. Um, so statement one is going to be a correct statement, which was made by Singh. So we've got correct, correct here, and incorrect, so we can go ahead and cross off C. Now we just need to determine whether Baker's statement is correct. Singh also focuses on the value of the slope coefficient. He expect, expects it to be 4.0 based on his experience in the industry. Baker computes the appropriate test statistics and reports the following. We fail to reject the null hypothesis that the slope coefficient equals 4.0 at the 5% significance level. Um, so we're using uh, this data here in exhibit one to calculate uh, this 4.0 number. Um, so I'm going to scroll down here so we can pull in our formula and take a look at this. All right. So we're going to have test statistic is going to be this uh, B1, B hat number minus B1. And this second number is what we're going to be testing, which is that 4.0 value. And then we're going to use the standard error of that um, variable in the uh, denominator. So this 2.897 number is coming from that first table, the coefficient of the cost of gold. And we're basically, and then the standard error of that coefficient is what we're using in the denominator. So we're testing this against that 4.0 number to see if it's significant at the 5% uh, level. Sorry, we're not, we're not yet testing the 5% level. Uh, so this is going to give us a minus 1.793 number. And the number we're uh, testing against at the 5% significance level. Um, is going to be a t-stat value of 2.045, positive 2.045. So positive 2.045 is going to be greater than um, minus 1.795. And so the uh, t-stat is going to be, uh, it's not going to be a significant, statistically significant. So let's look back at Baker's statement. We fail to reject the null hypothesis that the slope coefficient equals 4.0 at the 5% significance level. This is the correct answer um, because the, uh, the t-stat value you got was lower than the critical value. Um, so we will go with answer A. Both Singh and Baker are correct. Question four, which of the following best describes Sood's suggestion to correct the autocorrelation problem Correct, incorrect, or not enough information to make a judgment. So this is telling us uh, one of these statements or suggestions is going to be um, him making a suggestion on the autocorrelation problem. We need to determine whether that's right or not. So let's go back up to where we um, stopped at. So we stopped at model misspecification here. Sud and Singh discussed the potential problem of model misspecification and the effects of such misspecification. Sood worries that the regression model could be misspecified because it does not include a variable to measure the cost of highly specialized labor used by manufacturing jewelers. She points out that omitting an essential variable in a regression analysis will make the regression coefficients biased and inconsistent. Singh adds that another common consequence of misspecifying a regression analysis is creating undesired stationarity. Multiple regression section Baker conducts regression analysis, which uses it using all possible combinations of suggested independent variables based on their average quarterly values. The regression results for the equation, which uses all suggested independent variables, are shown in Exhibit 2. 
So we've got some regression data here, our R squared and Durbin Watson statistic. We really don't have any uh, anything related to our question yet, so let's keep on reading. Uh, Baker is concerned about the equation described in Exhibit 2, and he makes the following statement. The Durbin-Watson statistic indicates the presence of positive autocorrelation at the 5% level. All right, so it looks like we're getting somewhere here. And then Sood responds with the following statement. So this is probably his suggestion for solving for that autocorrelation. An autocorrelation problem can be addressed using the Hansen method to adjust R squared. So we need, basically just need to know the Hansen method to answer this question. Um, and then we can determine whether it's correct, incorrect, or not enough information. So the Hansen method uh, does not actually adjust R squared. It adjusts the standard error. So this statement um, is going to be incorrect. Uh, it won't be a good way to adjust for autocorrelation. So we can go with B here.